I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. Jerusalem is going to be divided. So says the prophecies of the Bible. And Zechariah says that God will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling or a cup of poison, if you please. Well, Mike Evans, um, one of the really neat uh, men who has traveled in political circles and has been on, in on inside meetings, um, tells us that Jerusalem is about to be betrayed. This is his book called Betrayed, the Conspiracy to Divide Jerusalem. And he was at the Annapolis Conference. I want to read just a little bit from his book. This is what he says. November 28, 2007. This was um, a meeting of some 47 nations at Annapolis for a summit meeting to discuss the dividing of Jerusalem. He said in the pre-dawn hours of the morning of the Annapolis summit, my car wound its way down the streets of that historic city toward the Naval Academy and the Annapolis summit. Precious fathers, mothers, and grandmothers shivered in the coldness of the, uh, in the darkness of the cold morning. Some of the men blew shofars and prayed openly. Most held signs printed with their pleas, don't touch Jerusalem, don't touch the Bible land, don't touch prophecy. Unbidden tears slid down my cheeks as I sensed how desperate and hopeless they must have felt. These who loved Jerusalem were overshadowed by the high and the mighty of the world. President George Bush, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, the UN Secretary General Ben Arban Ki-moon, the Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia Saad Al-Fazel, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister Fazel Mehdad, Secretary General of the Council of the European Union Javier Solana, Russian Foreign Minister uh, Sergei Lavrov, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, and foreign ministers from many Arab states. Altogether, there were world leaders from 47 countries present. Israel, the United States, Saudi Arabia, Spain, Syria, South Africa, Turkey, and the Palestinian Authority. Among those are known terrorists who were being treated as honored diplomats, all gathered to present Jerusalem with a belated Hanukkah gift. Not far from where the delegates gathered stands a stately 30-foot high monument to the birth of the U.S. Navy. As I stood in silence before the America's oldest war monument, I recalled the crisis that birthed our defender of the seas. It was America's first war in the Middle East against the pirates of Tripoli, the Muslim, the Islamic pirates of Tripoli, the Barbary the Barbary Wars. Uh, this was the first international peace conference since the U.S. organized Madrid Peace Summit at the end of Operation Desert Storm in 1991. The U.S. pressure applied to the Madrid Summit destroyed the economy of Israel. It caused the overthrow of the government as literally tens of thousands of Russian Jewish immigrants were forced to sleep Intense. Why? The United States froze $10 billion in loan guarantees that would have provided housing for these destitute men, women, and children. Israel was ultimately forced to give up more than 80 villages and towns, including Jericho, Hebron, and Bethlehem. And then it goes on to say the Saudis, of course, were overjoyed to hear President Bush's comments during the summit. Here's what George Bush said. When, while he was in office, uh, all seemed well, of course, between Israel and the United States until Annapolis. Mr. Bush's apparent last-ditch efforts to leave a lasting legacy of peace in the Middle East have overshadowed his commitments to Mr. Sharon. In the speech the president made at Annapolis, he said, quote, The Israelis must do their part. They must show the world that they are ready to begin to bring an end to the occupation that began in 1967 through a negotiated settlement. This settlement will establish Palestine as a Palestinian homeland, just as Israel is a homeland for the Jewish people. Israel, this is, these are the words of President Bush. Israel must demonstrate its support for the creation of a prosperous and successful Palestinian state by removing unauthorized outposts, ending settlement expansion, and finding other ways for the Palestinian Authority to exercise its responsibility without compromising 
Israel's security. Well, this rhetoric was not simply another minor land for peace grab. It was a demand that Israel give up land that is the most strategic area to ensure the survival of the Jewish people. Add to that the fact that President Bush's demand was not to be the final outcome of any negotiations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. It was the first step in any peace talk. Such a concession would leave Israel with no bargaining chips whatsoever. And he goes on to say, until that day of redemption arrives, we must not succumb to the complacency and we dare not compromise with the enemies of God. Rather, we must remain committed to the obedience of the Word of God. If we desire God's blessing, then we must bless His people, the people of the book, with unconditional love. We must stand not only with God's people, but with his city, Jerusalem. His word urges us to this commitment. He said, you who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 and 7. He says, God has promised to be an ever vigilant sentry over the walls of Jerusalem. His word assures us that Quote, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 121, verse 4. Israelis and Palestinians may wrangle over a final settlement on the issue of Jerusalem, but the city's final status was decided millennia ago by her true sovereign. Jerusalem may have been betrayed by the peace process, but that betrayal is not her final destiny. It's a powerful book from the man, by the way, who was there. And I just want to read to you a little bit of what I said here. Mike Evans reveals the secret plan to divide Jerusalem. Now the vultures gather yet again, sensing that the city of David will be laid on the altar of sacrifice. President Bush, during his term, agreed to what would be called the final status, an agreement to divide Jerusalem before the year 2009. We're now in that year. This book, of course has retailed for twenty nine ninety five. I want to offer it to you half price. I want to offer it to you for fourteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Just call the phone number at the bottom of your screen and get this important book today. Read all about Jerusalem, the conspiracy of uh, betrayed Jeru the conspiracy to divide Jerusalem, the secret US State Department plan to relinquish the Temple Mount, which will unlock Pandora's box and unify radical Islam. You need to understand completely everything that went on behind the scenes. And Mike Evans was there at these meetings. He knows what went on. He overheard conversations uh, of various diplomats and he puts them all in this book. It's a, it's a blockbuster, an astounding book I want you to get. Will you do it? Get it today from us. Fourteen ninety-five plus shipping and handling. Just call the phone number at the bottom of your screen. 475 that's 1-800-475-1111. And order the book, Betrayed, by Mike Evans, 1495. Will you do that? I hope you will. And then I want you to get our magazine. Don't forget, this magazine goes out every month. The um, June edition is now ready, and we want you to order it. And if you would just order the one magazine, fine. But... I also would like for you to subscribe for a year so that we can keep you in touch every month with what's going on in the Middle East as we prepare for Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, the one world government, the rise of the Antichrist. I am convinced it is soon. I don't know when we're going to be lifted out of here. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. But until then, hey, get the magazine, will you? And your subscription to the magazine, of course, will help us to keep this ministry going until we hear the shout. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.